New Japan's near month long climax rolls on. I'm John Rectum with my review of New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 33 Night 3 event with A Blocka and B Blocka action. No C, and she wants the D Blocka action because, yeah, I know what I said. With the Night 1 and 2 review, I was just going to end up doing these Human Centipede together, but I decided when I have time and I want to talk about some particular matches, I don't want to wait for this show to be over before I dive right into before the next one. Okay, Paula Cole is going to be goddamn pissed at me like Paula Cole would be doing. Is Paula Cole even still alive? Does anybody remember Dawson's Creek? Enough tangents, enough weirdness. I want to talk about a couple particular matches that I really enjoyed, so that's why I'm doing this. So yes, some videos will be human centipede together, and others will be individual. I will say right now, Jen, thank you very much for sending me this, because I'm going to break this out a couple times. However, that won't happen for the next few matches, or the first few matches, that is, because, oh boy, Kevin Kelly solo on commentary until Chase fucking Owens joins, and... Yeah, I was tempted to just turn it off right there. I'm glad I didn't, though, because there were a couple really good matches in the second half. We had Kaito! Kaito! Okay, that really doesn't work all that well. Yeah, Kaito's just what I'm going to call him because I can never get his last name right against Chase Owens. Kaito's not bad. I look forward to seeing how he does in this tournament. He obviously is very good in the ring. <coughs> Gain to be on this stage is great. Even though apparently he has done great things for Pro Wrestling Noah, Chase is just boring. Later, there were some near falls in Shining Wizard 1, 2, 3. That's about the best analysis I'm going to give to any Chase Owens match. Or really anything involving any member of Bullet Club. I love Kenta's theme. It's great. It's a boss battle theme from a role-playing game. Like Sui Koden or Sui Koden 2. Yes, for long-time viewers, maybe I will marry Sui Koden 2. Shut up. So Kenta took on the great Okan. Nice wrestling to start. They went into the crowd twice. Twice. Okan got battered around, then later Kenta got battered around. <laughs> and then, this will not end, is what I noted. And it isn't that I have anything against either of these two. I understand Kenta's a heel. He wants to be deliberate, but... Whew! Yeah, this is a little rough. A ref bump, and then he manages to get ahead. So he manages to get, you know... He manages to hold onto the ropes. One, two, three, and oh no! Okan got beat... Hoisted by his own Picard. I may have said that wrong, but yeah. Kenta got two more points. I haven't really been keeping track of the point totals here. I didn't even bother doing predictions for this tournament, which probably tells you exactly how I, you know, the level of enthusiasm I have for this particular tournament. There, that being said, some good stuff here that I'll get to, which wasn't Hikaleo versus Gabriel Kidd, or Gabe Kidd, or G Kidd, or whatever the fuck his name is. Another jump start. Just, just just, have Gabe Kidd go up first so you can attack him during his entrance. Anyway, crowd action again for the second match in a row. Back in the ring. Kidd landed right on his head when that uh, snap slam did not work out all that well. I hope he's all right. Cause, ooh, you can actually hear Hikaleo audibly saying, you all right? Mm. <clears throat> so then we got <coughs> a choke, but Hikaleo got to the ropes. And then, uh, you know, the ref got shoved, Jado got shoved, and then a low blow and a spike pile driver, one, two, three. Gabriel Kidd beat Hikaleo. Yeah, these, the, the jump start antics and everything are starting to get on my nerves. But things picked up with Tongaloa and Tai Chi. Hard hitting, the crowd loved Tai Chi, Tongaloa. Selling his knee, or maybe not selling his knee, it was really, really fucked, and he's just going to power through it. Um, then you hit me, I hit you, and that... That's kind of kind of overplayed, honestly. Like, I understand wanting to prove your worth, but, like, use it intermittently because if you use it, like, seven times during a show. Nevertheless, there was a knee shot to the post. Ouch. And this was fine enough. It was decently hard-hitting. Tonga selling his knee. Good back and forth. The Tai Chi clutch, not the Gato clutch. Tonga Loa did get a spear, <coughs> but eventually the clutch... Got locked on again. One, two, three. Tai Chi getting the victory. Okay. That's at least positive momentum that we've got. Which carries not into Chase Owens joining commentary. That that wasn't very good. Um, Yoda Suji versus Ren Narita. Can Ren Narita actually win a match? Or is he going to tie like he did in Shota? They, they tied. They, they drew. I think this is the idea that Ren needs maybe to be a little bit more aggressive. Even though he's really good. Because... 
This one didn't quite click as well as Narita and Shota, even though I thought that they kind of, not fumbled the finish, but they kind of got where it wasn't like, oh, we're just going for one more pin, one, two, and beep, 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 beep. Yeah, they were kind of just slugging it out. Yoda's smile is, again, off-putting. Very off-putting. I don't understand why it's so off-putting. Narita is going to be good. No, Yota, I have the higher ground. Hmm. And then... Uh, <laughs> Yota does this freaking tope. Where Narita gets hit, but to Yota just slams right into that freaking bike rack guardrail thing. Whatever the hell. Ouch. That looked really, really goddamn painful. I hope he's all right. <clears throat> A nice Northern Lights for two. Uh... <laughs> We got a Boston Crab spot straight out of the Young Lions playbook. But these guys have progressed, but they're like, we're going back to the roots and then the ropes. No, a big old combo and a slam for two. They're cooking here. Um, we got a German spot. We got a curb stomp for two. The time short, we're at one minute. Both are down. 30 seconds, 20 seconds. Sleeper and a twist in the ropes, and then Narita's going to go for a knee drop that I think was supposed to be like where he hits a knee drop and then one, two, ding, ding, ding. No, they, they, they didn't time that right. And then Yoda's like, we need to send uh, the crowd into the next match all happy, so let me hit a clothesline, cactus clothesline over the top. That should have been the finish. It wouldn't have made any sense considering you're supposed to try to win the match. I do like the 20-minute time limit, but uh, <coughs> instead of 30 minutes, because one, it means the shows are going to be a little bit shorter even if they go the distance and they're going for speed. So good, maybe not as good as Narita versus Shota Umino, but so far so good. Yoshihashi versus Will Ospreay. Surprise, surprise, I'm breaking this out. Why am I breaking this out? I'm not going to say this is one of Ospreay's best goddamn matches. It may end up being on my match of the year list for this reason. <clears throat> because, yes, a Yoshihashi match is on my favorite matches of the year list possibly. I know, isn't that shocking? Because he's good in the ring. He's boring, but nevertheless. Hard-hitting. They barely slowed down. And they registered enough stuff that you took it seriously. Um, the chops busted. Osprey's chest open. Here's a receipt. Osprey said, we got more hard-hitting chops, strikes, and os cutter for two. A huge lariat to a big old pop. A destroyer for two. A Spanish fly for two. We got... More good offense, and then Osprey hits some form of a twist. One, two, three, and there you are. Good stuff. A um, a proper way to, you know, keep a B block rolling because it went A B A B A B instead of B A. I think it went B A on night one. I didn't keep my notes because I honestly don't give a shit enough to like really do that and also with how much I review if I kept all my goddamn notes I would literally need to get a storage facility that's how many videos I've done so <clears throat> Osprey gets two points him and Yoshihashi had a pretty good match there and it was 13 14 minutes and it was hard hitting it was good I'm not saying that they couldn't have maybe ended it with like something a little bit before <laughs> but it didn't drag on like some Shota Umino then took on Sonata. Can Shota hang with the champion? Well, yes, he can to an extent. I like this one. I thought that there were a couple awkward moments, but it certainly wasn't bad. Sonata kept him grounded. Shota did fire back in. Nice fisherman's uh, suplex for two. Then they go outside again. See, if like two matches go outside and you just do a little action, but you don't go into the crowd, it's fine. But when every show does that... And this is across multiple companies. You need to scale that back a bit. Just as a fan, it gets monotonous and then you're skipping forward just trying to, you know, get through stuff that you've already seen. Good counters and stuff. We got a nice spike DDT and then another spike DDT. And then Skull End got countered. So Shota looked like he might get the victory. He got a neck breaker for two. But then, alas, he fell to deadfall, which makes sense given the name. One, two, three. So not a gain, two points. Shota had a good showing here. Had a good Shota in here. Okay, missed that opportunity. But yeah, Sonata got the victory, and then Okada versus El Phantasmo. Good main event. Very good main event, actually. El Phantasmo is one of my favorite wrestlers of last year. Like that means anything. I'm just one wrestling fan. And Okada is Okada. So how can you not love Okada? For he is Okada, and he is our uh, lord and savior as far as professional wrestling goes. Um, 
So this is a test for ELP, and he hung with him. He, I mean, ELP has done good the last couple of years. I mean, he's been good in the ring, but has cut down on the antics. He did do the nipple twist at one point, which, whatever, okay. Um, <coughs> Okada was more deliberate. Uh, DDT to the floor by ELP, tr getting revenge on Okada since he's, you know, he constantly hits that. We get a big old drop kick to a pop. Uh, Lion salt for two, so ELP getting very close. Hit a CR2 for a very close two count. Very close. And then <clears throat> he did uh, hit a moonsault outside to a big pop. <clears throat> Counters, we got a tombstone from ELP. One, two, kick out. And then very soon after, Okada says, fucking landslide, Rainmaker, one, two, three. <laughs> He's like, yeah, whatever. That was good. That was good stuff. Um, Okada sends the crowd home happy. Now we'll see what happens with night four. So, yeah. <laughs> As the tournament goes on, as long as the views stay up, I will continue to review it. If they don't, eh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, if, there, if there's a downturn in views, like, you may just see me skip to the finals. That being said, I plan to try to review the whole goddamn thing. As for next year, I don't know if I'm going to review it next year. Agree, disagree with what I said. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.